So guys, recently I've been playing the Burial at Sea DLC for Bioshock Infinite, both Episode 1 and Episode 2. There were a lot of things that I overlooked the first couple of times I actually played it, which is absolutely mind-blowing. You guys know how I am with Bioshock, so for that to be the case is absolutely crazy. So what we're going to do today is actually look over five things that you may not have noticed within the beginning, middle, and end of Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea Episode 2. If you guys enjoyed the video by the end, feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way, you can join the notification squad. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. In at number one, one of the most popular arguments within the Bioshock Infinite game itself was the argument of the bird and the cage. This often came up and first came up when Elizabeth breaks out of the tower with Booker and you meet the Lutesses. They ask you, the bird or the cage, for the gem or little stone that ends up in Elizabeth's choker around her neck. Eventually, you can pick whichever, the bird or the cage, that's all on you. I find it interesting that this shows up so much within the Paris scenes of Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea Episode 2. This is something that I wasn't originally looking for, but I noticed it so much that I just feel like I had to include it at the first slot on the list. Number two. Basically, what the beginning of episode two is all about is kind of like the beginning of Bioshock Infinite, except a complete 180 and a complete reversal of characters. Instead of Booker going up to this extravagant, well-lit-up, cheery city of Columbia, we have Elizabeth, who ends up going to Paris. She still has the same exact goals as Booker, such as to bring the girl to wipe away the debt, and they have to find the girl. You noticed that? You noticed the correlation here? Booker lands on Columbia, he has to find Elizabeth. Elizabeth goes to Paris, she has to find Sally. It's just crazy. And then there's also a lot of different little Easter eggs here and there, like, you'll be seeing on the screen right about now, a woman, instead of having the raffle baseballs with the numbers on them, and asks Booker to pick one, a woman has a basket of bread or baguettes and ends up offering one to Elizabeth, so I thought that was pretty cool. So, let me know what you guys think of that. Coming in at the number three slot, and this is a spoiler warning for you guys, so heads up. The first two are completely okay. It doesn't ruin anything, it's just kind of getting you into the overall DLC, I suppose. This one, however, ends up probably ruining it for you if you haven't played either Burial at Sea, Burial at Sea Episode 2, Infinite, or Bioshock 1, so kind of watch at your own discretion. So, within the scene where you finally start chasing Sally, you end up seeing all of these different foreshadowing events. For example, there's a gust of wind that ends up blowing a stack of cards. And the one card you notice is the Ace of Spades. That's one of the most recognizable cards in a deck of cards. The entire Episode 2 DLC is about finding the Ace in the Hole for Atlas, and that ends up being Jack in the end and around Bioshock 1, or for Bioshock 1, I should say. Another thing that it foreshadows is the torture method that Atlas uses on Elizabeth and then eventually tries to end up using on Sally to try to get information out of Elizabeth, that being the prefrontal lobotomy or something of the sort. You take that ice pick, or whatever it is, I guess you can really call it, put it behind the eyeball, hit it with a mallet, and it cracks the skull. It shows a actual diagram of it within Paris. And then finally, just all of the flashbacks and all of the similarities between Jack, Booker, and Elizabeth. This next one is just something that personally I never have noticed and I was just kind of looking around when I was in the boat during the scene where Elizabeth has the flashback of being in the boat with the Lutesses again similar to how Booker ended up getting to the lighthouse in the first place. 
if you look in the water, and you guys are going to see it on the screen, you can see dead versions of Elizabeth. Again, it's a part of foreshadowing, but it also shows that there are millions of possible outcomes within the entire universe of Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. These are all the deaths that Elizabeth had up until that point, so to me that's absolutely mind-blowing. And just the fact that I didn't notice it at first, it just actually completely caught me by surprise. Now the final one doesn't pertain to the overall gameplay itself, it's more or less behind the scenes. So originally, different actors for the voice of Fontaine and Atlas were changed. In Bioshock 1, Greg Baldwin voiced both Frank Fontaine and Atlas, but then in Burial at Sea, they ended up changing to someone else named Carl Hanover, so why they changed voice actors? I don't know. There is a little bit of a difference that you can tell from Bioshock 1 to Burial at Sea Episode 2. That's just me though. You might not have noticed a major change in the voice, but still I find that pretty cool that they were able to pull that off while still keeping the same accents, the same style of voice, and the same sound overall. So anyways, if you guys did enjoy the video and want to see more, like I said earlier, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Feel free to like or dislike the video, it's completely okay. And with that being said, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Take care. Hey guys, thank you all for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, would you kindly tap that thumbs up button. It would help this video get out there and it would also help my channel grow. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more from me, would you kindly tap that subscribe button so you will not miss another video. If you want to chat with me or talk about anything gaming related or if you have any questions, feel free to follow me on Twitter at the Bioshock Hub. There will be an annotation on the screen now or a link in the description for you guys to check out. Again, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you all in the next one. Take care.